Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Government House. My name is Hugh Borrowman. I have the honour to be the Official Secretary to Her Excellency the Governor and I'll be the Master of Ceremonies this afternoon. This is the third of six ceremonies to present Australian honours, most of which were announced on Australia Day. It's now my pleasure to announce the official party. They are the Honourable Jeff Brock, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, representing the Premier. The Honourable Michelle Lensink, representing the Leader of the Opposition. Commander Emma MacDonald Kerr, Commanding Officer, HMAS Encounter. Lieutenant Lisa Nelson, First Lieutenant, HMAS Encounter. Colonel Trent Bernard, representing the Army Area Representative, South Australia. Group Captain Jason Powers, representing the Senior Australian Defence Force, Edinburgh. And Assistant Commissioner Scott Dubail, representing the Commissioner of Police. Can I please ask you now if you are able to stand for the arrival of Her Excellency the Governor and Mr Bunton and to remain standing for the playing of the Vice Regal Salute. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Government House. I'm going to begin with an acknowledgement of country in the Ghana language. Ghana, Bogana Aelia, Ghana Miana Aelia, Yaichi Miana Aelia, Kumatana Yartananku. I acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional lands of the Ghana people and I pay my respects to the elders. Now it's wonderful to have you all here this afternoon. Uh, Rod and I are very keen that Government House be a place where all South Australians feel welcome. And I know today there are a number of you who've travelled long distances from across our state. And it's wonderful to see your outstanding service, your achievements, are recon recognised in the way that they're going to be. And if, if we all just visualise a map of the state and some of these names are read out, uh, I think you'll see we've got pretty good coverage today. This is a very special ceremony. Awards in the Order of Australia are made to people who give outstanding service or whose achievements are often actually quite extraordinary. The details of those, of course, are known intimately not only to the recipients, but also to you, family members and friends, supporters, uh, often without whose support their service would not have been possible. And while this ceremony today, of course, has a personal aspect, it's also important uh, in the larger picture, the larger picture of, our, of South Australia and our state and the way we recognise service. And that's the reason, really, why we have today, just as we do at every single one of these six investiture ceremonies, uh, the heads of the services, Army, Navy, Air Force, and South Australia Police, or their representatives. It's why the Premier sends uh, a minister, Jeff Brock, today. Wonderful to have you with us, Jeff. Why the Leader of the Opposition is represented today by the Honourable Michelle Lansink, a member of the Legislative Council. But it's also why we have others whose backs you can only see. And I just want to mention them by name. Uh, Rick Morris, who's South Australia's representative on the uh, Council for the Order of Australia that meets in Canberra, I think, a couple of times a year and goes through all of the nominations, uh, thousands of pages, literally, each time. It's why Noel Hender is here, representing the chairman of the... Uh, Order of Australia Association South Australia branch and Noel's been a recipient of well lots of things actually as you'll see I think he's got the biggest chest full of medals today but the Order of Australia medal uh, and interestingly for some anyway a British Empire medal also. So that shows that this is an important occasion for our state as well as for each of you. Now, I know it has an air of formality. It's inevitable in this ballroom with the red carpet and other things we have. But we really want you to feel welcome. We want you to feel comfortable. Uh, it's my hope that the recipients of awards will feel as comfortable as you're standing up here next to me hearing the citation. Uh, people often feel they'd rather not listen to all of their achievements, but you've been very comfortable giving every day of your lives often the service that we're recognising today and I hope you'll enjoy the occasion. As I said, you, you all know at least intimately the service of one of the recipients, 
But when you add it all up together, and that's what will happen in the course of the next uh, close to well, 45 minutes or so, is you will hear all of the citations and you'll come to realise the sum total of all of that service really is something very extraordinary. Extraordinary too because the recipients are pretty modest people. They're often surprised to learn that they've been nominated or that their name is to appear on an honours list. Uh, they may initially feel a little reluctant to use the post nominals, the, uh, the letters that will now come after their names. You've had a few months to get used to that and I hope that you will use it always. Similarly, I hope you will wear your insignia, whether it's the medal, uh, whether it's the miniatures, or whether it's the pin for everyday use. Uh, I wear my pin every day, except when I'm wearing this on occasions like this. Uh, and I hope as I see you around the community, as I'm bound to do, you'll be wearing your pins as well. Finally, I'd just like to say, uh, we are here today with this group of people because each of you were nominated by someone who saw in you outstanding service or exceptional achievement. Uh, and I do want to encourage everyone in the room, please, uh, to think about nominating others who you think are worthy of this recognition or encouraging others to nominate others because there are many South Australians who are worthy of uh, receiving awards in the Order of Australia. So with that, Official Secretary, over to you. Your Excellency, the following recipient has been appointed an officer in the Order of Australia in the General Division. Professor Hedy Zola is recognised for distinguished service to medical research, particularly immunology and immunopathology, and to professional associations. Professor Zola's highly decorated research career spans more than 50 years with profound contributions to diverse communities in science and healthcare. He has been at the forefront of research into immunity and developed the first lab to mass produce monoclonal antibodies, which can be used to treat many diseases, including cancer. Professor Zola's game-changing research at Flinders Medical Centre produced a paradigm shift in immunology discovers, discoveries in Australia and across the world. He was instrumental in facilitating the installation of the first flow cytometer cell sorter in South Australia, which is now commonly used in both research and clinical laboratories. Professor Zola is National Health and Medical Research Centre Chief Investigator with 20 grants and has authored more than 260 peer-reviewed papers in scientific journals. He has served in more than 40 different professional roles across some 20 professional societies in Australia and the world. Beyond his scientific excellence, Professor Zola has been a driving force of support for many Australian scientists and has helped place investigators and their work on the world stage. Professor Hedy Zola. Your Excellency, the following recipients have been appointed members in the General Division of the Order of Australia. Dr Elizabeth Ann Coates is recognised for significant service to special needs dentistry and to oral health care. Dr Coates has had a profound effect on the dental profession by freely sharing her knowledge, mentoring others and championing the treatment of special needs patients. Widely respected for her dedication and compassion towards all patients, she led infection control practices in the 1980s when little was known about the AIDS epidemic and also led the profession on hepatitis C infection control. Measures put in place by the team led by Dr Coates provided public assurance that dental treatment was safe. 
A fellow of several professional associations, she is a life member of the Australian and New Zealand Academy of Special Needs Dentistry. Now retired, Dr Coates is also recognised for her service as the former head of the Special Needs Unit of the Adelaide Dental Hospital and as a lecturer at the Adelaide Dental School. Her contribution to infection control standards has been profound at both state and federal level. The career direction of many dentists has been influenced by her leadership by example. Dr Elizabeth Ann Coates. Dr Jennifer Flavia de Lima is recognised for significant service to rural and remote medicine. A commitment to working with disadvantaged people has been the hallmark of Dr de Lima's medical career, which has seen her practising in remote Aboriginal communities, regional hospitals and the prison system. Motivated by a desire to help address the health disparity between socio-economic groups, partway through a fellowship in emergency medicine, she moved to a remote town community on the West Australian Northern Territory border. Under mentoring from Indigenous leaders and remote health workers, she embraced general practice there. Dr Delima's career has also encompassed working in prison medicine and dealing with a high volume of patients with addiction. In addition, she has served as a director of the Sexual Assault Referral Centre in Alice Springs. Currently taking a step back from her busy career, Dr. DeLima continues to work as a remote GP supervisor and is developing a rural specific drug and alcohol program. Throughout her working life as a fellow of the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine, she has lived up to its ethos of a desire to see more, do more and be more. Dr. Jennifer Flavia DeLima. Dr Timothy William Proudman is recognised for significant service to plastic and reconstructive surgery and to professional organisations. For more than 20 years, Dr Proudman has been head of the reconstructive and plastic surgery at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Known for his selfless commitment to patients, he has also worked as the hospital's senior visiting medical specialist, plastic and reconstructive surgery, and senior clinical lecturer, Department of Surgery. <coughs> He is also a former head of the Adelaide Women and Children's Hospital Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Unit. Respected for his commitment to training the next generation of surgeons, Dr Proudman is a fellow of the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons and former chair of the college's training board in plastic and reconstructive surgery. He's a member of the Australian Society of Plastic Surgeons, the Australian Hand Surgery Society, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, and the Australasian Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Since 2016, he has been the team coordinator of Interplast's volunteer plastic and reconstructive surgical team to Bhutan. His work has facilitated the training of that country's first reconstructive surgeon, who is now improving people's lives through treating burns and serious wounds. Dr. Timothy William Proudman.
Your Excellency, the Medal of the Order of Australia in the General Division has been awarded to the following recipients. Mr. Geoffrey Roy Ambler is recognised for service to the community of Salisbury. Since arriving in Australia from England some 50 years ago, Mr. Ambler has been actively involved in all facets of the northern suburbs community, including sport, health and religion. As president of the Salisbury Bowling Club, Mr. Ambler oversaw the development of the facility into one of the leading clubs in Australia. He was also instrumental in the major redevelopment of the bowling complex, which allows for year-round play regardless of weather conditions. Mr. Ambler's voluntary contributions extend to the Helping Hand Parafil Gardens Residential Home Care, which he helped to establish in 1985, later serving as chair of the facility. He has been committed to his church community for five decades, undertaking various positions at the Parafield Gardens Uniting Church, as well as chairman of the Salisbury Parish Council. Mr. Geoffrey Roy Ambler. Mrs. Diane Elizabeth Bilker is recognised for service to nursing. Mrs. Bilker has spent decades as a nurse in remote Australia, serving the Andamooka community in far north South Australia for more than 40 years. She entered nursing in the 1970s and yearned to take her skills to the outback, having grown up in the country until she was eight years old. Shortly after graduation, Mrs. Bilker joined Frontier Services a charity supporting people living in remote parts of the state. When a position became vacant in Andamooka, Mrs. Bilker moved to the remote mining community where she provided essential health services for the next four decades. Mrs. Bilker has also worked as part of the Royal Flying Doctor Service, serving six years as a nurse with the Aeromedical Organisation. Her community involvement extends to the South Australian State Emergency Service, where she has been a member of the Andamooka unit for nearly 20 years. Mrs. Diane Elizabeth Bilka. The late Mr. Neville Ann Cords is recognised for service to the community of Kangaroo Island. Mrs. Rosalind Cords, widow of Mr. Cords, will accept his award on behalf of the family. The late Mr. Cords had an enduring love for Kangaroo Island, serving the community as founder and owner for 29 years of the Islander newspaper and as mayor for four years. Highly regarded for his energetic commitment to the Kangaroo Island community, he was known for always wanting to make life better for people. The author of more than 50 books about the island's history, he was a long-time member of the Kangaroo Island Pioneers Association and its president for eight years. He was also a founding member of the Advance Kingscote Progress Association. Mr Cords brought his community spirit to many roles, including secretary of the Kingscote Football and Tennis Clubs, parish councillor at St Albans Church, and membership of the St John's Ambulance Service, Lions, Rural Youth, and later the Anglican Parish of Glenelg, 
the Royal Association of Justices of South Australia and the Friends of Glenthorne. The late Mr Neville Allen Cords. We now have a special double presentation. The first will be an award to Mr Robert Cowan, who is recognised for service to the community of Mount Gambia. And the second is a presentation to, on behalf of his late wife, Mrs Gail Linford Cowan, also for service to the community of Mount Gambia. Equal access to education has been the primary driver behind Mr Cowan's philanthropic endeavours, helping more than 1,500 rural and regional tertiary students meet their university costs. The Cowan Family Grant Trust, of which he is a trustee, has provided more than $3.5 million to support geographically and financially disadvantaged university students since its establishment in 1994. Mr Cowan has been deeply committed to the Mount Gambia community and has long-standing involvement across many sectors, including in education, art and culture, and the forestry industry. Mr Cowan worked for more than 35 years in the state's timber industry, spending much of his career in senior executive roles at the South Australian Woods and Forests Department. He also served as the inaugural chairman of the Southeast Economic Development Board and chair of the Riddick Art Gallery Board. Mr Robert Cowan. Mr Cowan will also accept the award on behalf of his late wife, Mrs Gail Linford Cowan. The late Mrs Cowan's community service reflected a commitment to education at all levels, from kindergarten, primary and secondary school to university. Mrs Cowan served executive roles in several Mount Gambia educational facilities, including the Umphiston Kindergarten, Reedy Park Primary School and Grant High School. As secretary and trustee of the Cowan Grant Trust, established by her husband's mother in 1994, Mrs Cowan was instrumental in expanding the Trust's philanthropic offerings for regional students to attend university. Mrs Cowan's voluntary contributions also extended to arts and culture, serving on the Friends of the Riddick Art Gallery Committee for 25 years, with seven years as president. In this role, Mrs Cowan was deeply involved in fundraising activities to purchase art for the gallery and co-authored a book about the committee. The late Mrs Gail Linford Cowan. Mr Dennis Richard Jarman is recognised for service to the communities of Elizabeth and Playford. For Mr Jarman, community service has always been as important as his career. A senior executive in the former retail store John Martins, he always found time to undertake various roles at the Central District Football Club, as well as his local church, to attend community meetings, organise events and undertake fundraising activities. As the Chief Executive Officer and Chairperson of the Playford Community Fund for many years, Mr Jarman assisted people in need with food and financial resources. Deeply passionate about the Elizabeth Playford area, his home since he was 28 years old, Mr Jarman continues to serve as a member of the local Lions Club and the Church of Christ. In 2005, he won Australia Day Citizen of the Year Award for the City of Playford, just one of the many accolades he has received for his decades of service. Mr Dennis Richard Jarman.
Mr. Dean Russell Curley is recognised for service to the community of Loxton Wakery. In a small community, generosity makes a big impact. As chairman of the Loxton Community Men's Shed, Mr. Curley heads a group of volunteers who tackle projects for the community. There's a spirit of mateship that runs through all of Mr. Curley's contributions. A recipient of the 30 Year Service Medal of the South Australian Country Fire Service, he is also the current local election officer and a life member of Brownswell Football Club. From sport and education to volunteering and local government, Mr. Curley is a hands-on community man and advocates for elevating local voices. In a region with an economy that relies on protecting its land, Mr. Curley's knowledge as a farmer remains vital today. This is the second award Mr. Curley has received on Australia Day. In 2016, he was named Australia Day Citizen of the Year for the District Council of Loxton Wakery. Mr. Dean Russell Curley. Dr. Joylene Ann O'Hazy is recognised for service to the community and to medicine. Dr. O'Hazy has dedicated 42 years to serving the South Australian community as a general practitioner. She has specialised in rural women's health as a fly-in, fly-out doctor, providing support for many regional communities where female doctors are underrepresented. Dr. O'Hazy is the Deputy Chair of Birthing Kit Foundation Australia, a non-profit organisation providing birthing kits and education to pregnant women in the developing world. She was responsible for developing the prototype kit, millions of which have now been distributed. Dr O'Hazy chairs the Adelaide Hills Zonta Club and travels around to schools educating young children. She has also gained considerable experience working in specialist services such as urology clinics, SHINE, Breast, Breast Screen SA, Migrant Health Services, the Queen Victoria Hospital, and Women's Health Services. In 2020, Dr O'Hazy was nominated as South Australian of the Year in recognition of her ongoing commitment to women's health. Dr Joylene Ann O'Hazy. Dr Evelyn Mei Yin Yap is recognised for service to medicine and multiculturalism. Distinguished medical specialist Dr Yap is in, actively involved in a range of professional, charitable and community organisations, harnessing her Malaysian background to better understand and appreciate the challenges faced by migrants. Committed to helping people with linguistic challenges to understand their illnesses, she has worked tirelessly to improve the health outcomes of patients. A Deputy Managing Partner at Benson Radiology, she is also a physical, visiting medical consultant at Breast Screen South Australia and a staff consultant at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. A former President and long-serving member of the Australian Chinese Medical Association, she is also a member of the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists, a Fellow of the Australasian Association of Nuclear Medicine Specialists and a member of the Australian Medical Association. Dr Yap is also recognised for her service to the Malaysia Club of South Australia, the Australia-Malaysia Business Council South Australia, the Chinatown Lunar New Year Street Party, the Ausasia Festival, the Migration Museum and the Australian Migrant Resource Centre. Dr Evelyn May Yin Yap.
Your Excellency, that concludes the presentations for this afternoon. Thank you, Official Secretary. And look, I'm sure you'll agree. I mean, you only let you need to let your imaginations run a little bit to think about what it's like on the Western Australian Northern Territory border, uh, or in Andamooka, or in Nuriutpur, or in Loxton Wakery, or uh, down in uh, the um, southeast, or over on Kangaroo Island. And I think uh, we've had a, a journey across all of these places this afternoon. We've come to understand how fortunate those communities are, uh, as well as the community here in Adelaide and the whole state of South Australia, to have such uh, worthy recipients of awards in the Order of Australia. So uh, please, let's give everyone uh, a final congratulations as a group, please.